Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to our Aston Martin playthrough. Uh, this is the, uh, the difficult playthrough. This is the playthrough where we've set ourselves some very strict rules and regulations to try and make the game harder because, let's face it, if you know what you're doing, it does get a bit easy a bit quickly. Uh, as you can see by the dominance that we are showing on our Haas file right now, um, so as a way to try and prolong the life of the game a little bit by making it a bit harder for ourselves this is a, a playthrough where we are instigating quite tough rules uh, a quick recap of that um, we cannot change our drivers now uh, until their contracts expire and both of these young drivers are with us for the next five seasons once their contracts expire then we can either choose to renew them or promote a young reserve driver if we have one by that point we still are with Nico Hulkenberg and uh, we also have uh, the same rules in place with our staff uh, we can't replace our staff until their contracts expire uh, when that happens we can choose to either renew or replace but we can't um, we can't uh, just you know cherry pick the best staff right from uh, you know, as soon as we want to at any point we have to wait until contracts expire we have to honor contracts basically uh, we also have regulation limits on what parts we can design how frequently we can design them and uh, how frequently we can upgrade our uh, our main facilities as well and I'm gonna add one more regulation that I've been thinking about over the last couple of days and that is that we are no longer um, from this point onwards we are no longer going to be able to use intents when we are designing a brand new part we can only use normal or rushed because I think that's going to help slow down how quickly our car develops quite significantly and that in itself is going to be a good thing I think so we're making it even harder <laughs> uh, and it's already pretty tough at the start because we've got such young inexperienced drivers but it's it's going to mean that we're going to have probably two or maybe even three seasons of running really quite off the pace before we start to gain momentum i think through the uh, through the grid and start to move up the order uh so uh yeah this is going to be a very painful year um i think we'll be lucky to score points at all this year kind of hoping we do i mean we do need to get eighth and uh, so we're going to have to outscore Haas because they're going to score at some point. Um, we'll see how we do. How you doing, Anthony? How you doing, Marcel? Good to see you guys. Right, uh, we left it right after the uh, the uh, uh, the Jeddah Grand Prix last time, so we've actually got a little bit of lead time going into Australia. Uh, as you can see, we've got a development point here with Freddie Vesti. Let's uh, go ahead and allocate that right now. And we're immediately going to put that straight into his braking because that's not a very good stat at all at the moment. Uh, we do not have a point for Felipe, but now oh, he's a way off as well. His next point. Uh, Nico is still there. Uh, we're not going to replace Nico um, for a while. I mean, we can replace our reserve driver at any point. That was one of the... the uh, uh, conditions of reserve drivers uh, but there isn't really anybody I want to sign at this point to promote uh, or to start you know, uh, spending time you know, pushing and developing because we're still trying to spend as much time as we can pushing and developing Vesti and Felipe so until those guys are at a level where I think they're happy to you know, start sitting out sessions we're going to keep Nico and just let him sit in the, in, the, in the background in obscurity uh, in terms of our staff uh, we actually have a development point for Andrew Green uh, let's see where is a weak point uh, the rear wing's not great underfloor isn't amazing uh, let's go with a rear wing uh, we've got a point for Alessandro as well that's good uh Let's boost uh, high-speed downforce. Uh, Chris Cronin and Ben do not have points, and it's going to be a long while for them to get points as well. Uh, I have been talking with the idea of limiting our engineering team as well to 
always be 10 at a maximum. I might well add that rule as well. I'll think about that one. Uh, our scouting team, are we upgrading our scouts at the moment? We are. Uh, 18 days left on that one. Uh, let's take a look at our facilities. We can do a race sim upgrade. But, well, we could if we had the money, but we don't have the money. <laughs> so we can't. Um, let's... Let's take a look at how our car development is coming along. We've got a suspension due in a few days, actually. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that on the car. It was a difficult race for the board. Um, I mean, we didn't finish particularly well. I think we finished uh, 17th and 18th. Where did we finish, actually? Let's have a quick look. Oh, 17th and and, uh, and retirement for Felipe. So, yeah, very difficult race. Right. Uh, let's advance time. Get our suspension done. The board are currently satisfied with our workers' team principal. They were happy with Sakir. We got a decent result in Sakir, but uh, only satisfied with Jeddah. Uh, happy with, well, satisfied with objectives at the moment, but we are below target for this season. Uh, financially, no debt this month. They're satisfied because it was only a small amount of debt uh, in March. So that's good. There's a warning that our uh, suspension is at low stock. Well, that's fine because we're about to make a brand new suspension. Uh, monthly car development, uh, not great as you can see in terms of where we sit on the grid. And it's going to be like that for a while. Let's go ahead and manufacture the brand new one. Uh, so we've got a Grand Prix in seven days. Rushing is only going to get one in time. So we're going to have to emergency manufacture. Um, we're going to emergency manufacture one of them. Uh, let's put that straight onto the car. There we go. And we're going to manufacture normally one part. So we've got one each. Taking a gamble here. Uh, because we're going to immediately make another new suspension to uh, really get our brakes up to snuff. So, new project, design, suspension. Uh, we don't get any more hours for uh, another 30 days. Uh, so we're gonna go into optimized cooling. That will uh, have us uh, really get a nice little boost to our brakes there. Uh, minor little improvements to the rest of the car. Uh, let's go to engineers, we've got four available and we will rush this one uh, 17 days means we will get this in time for the next Grand Prix so we just have to get through uh, this Grand Prix with this current suspension that we just manufactured and then we'll have another new another new one uh, with better brakes for uh, for Imola which will be useful there we go There is the suspension manufactured for Felipe's car. I'm just going to hope that uh, neither of them prang the car now in practice here at uh, uh, at, Mon at uh, Melbourne. There we go. So both cars now with the new improved suspension. Uh, it doesn't really do much <laughs> in terms of where we sit on the grid, as you can see. It maybe improves our brake cooling a little bit, but we're still very slow. Very, very slow. And our drivers are also very, very slow. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to be uh, definitely locked in, in perpetual battle with Williams. And hopefully we can sneak a point here and there towards the end of the season. 
but uh, yeah I think we've uh, we've got a mountain to climb if we've got any chance of uh, decent results so far this season uh, right race prep for Australia uh, targets uh, I'm not going to set any targets uh, when we haven't got the pace to get into Q2 um, I doubt we're going to get both cars in the top 15 we can try but it's it's not going to happen I don't think we're certainly not going to get the fastest lap um, finish position streak if we're lucky we can get a car in the top 15 twice uh, just one car uh, we're certainly not going to be able to qualify in the top 15 so yeah we're not gaining much here uh, what I am going to do though is because we've had a new payday uh, from the board we are going to go ahead and drop in a new upgrade on the race simulator there we go get that started that's going to take a month to get done evening Jeremy welcome to Melbourne for a weekend of fierce competition we're a stone's throw from the beach here at the Albert Park Circus. It might be party mood in the grandstands, but in the paddock, expectations and tensions are high. The Albert Park Circuit is bursting with rapid corners and a long straight where drivers can push their speed to the limit. Good attention to medium speed downfalls will likely make beating this beast of a track just a little bit easier. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. Let's get this underway. I'm doing very well, Jeremy. Thank you for asking, and uh, happy birthday, buddy. Okay, so, um, we've got a wet race. Ah. I don't know how good our drivers are in the wet. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> uh, so we've got light rain on Saturday. That could be either practice or quali. We won't know till we get, or both. Uh, we won't know until we get to those sessions. But we've got heavy rain in the race. Ooh. That's, uh, yeah, that could potentially be very tough, but it's also potentially a chance for us to maybe sneak up the order a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at car parts. Uh, gearboxes are already very worn for our drivers, and you can see in particular Felipe's car has taken a knock on its engine from that crash he had at Jeddah, so uh, he's lost an extra 10 or 10% 10 or so on his engine that's not so good let's go ahead and uh, choose some setups okay let's go with a 7.5 a 13 uh, an 8.2 won't fit so we'll go with a 7.3 uh, a 3.15 and a 0.5 so that's Felipe's, uh, sorry, um, Vesti's car setup. We'll go with 18 laps. Actually, no, we'll go with. Uh, we want to maximise our running today because we know we've got rain coming. So we'll go with 21 laps. 22 laps. Try to think. No, we need time to turn the cars around after the first run. Let's go 20 laps. Um, drop the pace down and we'll go with hard tyres for this first session. I'm so used to uh, putting in a youth driver and using softs on day one. We permanently got youth drivers for the next couple of seasons. There we go. Uh, so 20 laps, drop the pace. And let's go with, let's see if we can do an 8.2 on this car. Yeah, we can. Okay, so we'll go uh, 7.5, 13, 8.2. Let's go 2.95 and 0.3. There we go. That will fit in tolerance. So 
Off we go. Radio check. Radio check. Radio check. Okay, it's green now. So we're going to whiz through practice as quick as we can. Oh, straight away we've Let's got a lockup for Felipe. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. Neither of our drivers has amazing braking. Uh, Felipe does actually have the better braking stat of the two. But this is why we're developing suspensions as quickly as we can to boost the braking, because they're a quick and easy part to develop. And uh, while this one has given us a little boost, the next suspension will give us a, a much more significant boost to our brake cooling, I believe. And given where we're going to the next race, we definitely want brakes that are as good as we can. Felipe is looking a little bit quicker than uh, than Vesti this weekend. Although, as you can see, once again, it is very close between the two. What's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? Okay, that's an excellent start. We are almost spot on on that first uh, that first run there. How's the balance? I'm not quite there with Felipe's car. going to an 8 front wing and see if that works we need a slightly bigger change on this one uh, the cornering is a bit off so I do have another 7.5 setup that we can go to uh, which is the one that we put on um, Freddy's car so that's a 3.15 and a 0.5 and that gives us a small change to the front braking stability is not going to work there let's try let's try that let's mm.
Yeah, we'll try that. Uh, that gives us the small change that we need to traction, the bigger change that we need to cornering. We'll see how that works. Okay, uh, so the um, change to gameplay with the latest game update is going to make this season <laughs> even harder for us, this series even harder for us, until we can get some real pace in both our car and our drivers. Because uh, uh, being able to get pulled along with DRS is going to be much, much trickier now. And there's a lockup for, uh, for Freddy this time. So that's one lockup each for our drivers now. Was that a lock up on the track? However, it's also going to help us as well um, because we are going to get lapped a lot in this first season. And the ability to unlap ourselves if we get um, if we get a significant tyre advantage, for example, this is a heavy wet race. Uh, so if we can get onto the right tyres at the right time and get a significant advantage over a car that has lapped us, we should be able to unlap ourselves. Um, likewise, if there's a safety car, we can get ourselves back on the lead lap, however long that will be for. <laughs> I doubt we'll be able to catch up to the traffic if we, you know, at the back of the queue again, but it at least gives us a, a fighting opportunity potentially to try and gain an extra place or two so yeah it's going to be an interesting season um, with those uh, those new changes to the game and while I have seen uh, the AI unlap themselves during a safety car uh, that was when I was racing with uh, McLaren and I was on the lead lap and I watched three lapped cars unlap themselves, two Williams and a, and a Haas. Not been in a position where I've had to try and unlap myself yet. This is going to be my first attempt at that tonight because it's, we're going to get lapped. But given that it's a, a heavy rain race, a full wet race, uh, there's a highly likely point where we will be on inters before the AI is and we will potentially be able to unlap ourselves with a significant tyre advantage over the AI. Alright, Anthony's car, no it's not Anthony, uh, Freddy Vesti's car is done, uh, Felipe's car is not. We have improved it slightly. So, uh, we're going to go with the mediums for this session. Once again, we want to maximise our running while we have the opportunity. Uh, so, we're going to go 40 laps. Let's not go that many because we are still going to do some running in the final session. Let's go. Um, let's go 30 laps. We still need to run for half an hour in the final session to get the, the experience points that we need as well, so we can't overdo it today. Um, what needs to change? Okay, the traction needs to change. So that needs to be a 3.7 or a 7.3. And let's give that a go. That one change could be everything we need to do. Ready to check?
One other rule I am going to add in, um, which is something I hadn't done, I don't think. It was something I was definitely thinking about, but I don't think I actually put it, uh, you know, confirmed it. Is that we are not going to take penalties um, tactically. We're going to only take penalties uh, through necessity. So we're not going to, uh, you know, go to a race, you know, deliberately taking, you know, a couple of new engines or a couple of new gearboxes or everything like that. We're only going to change to put a new engine in the car, a brand new engine um, that we we don't already have in the car we when we now. absolutely have so to. Same with Aston gearboxes, Martin. same with ERS. And that spin is undoubtedly going to cost them time. So if we get towards the end of the season and then we run out of useful engines and we have to take a penalty, then that's when we take an engine penalty. We don't take one early in the season um, and then hold an extra engine in the bank. We can still choose when to use the engines that we have in our existing supply. We just can't add, you know, tactically ahead of time. We, we can only add through necessity. How does it feel? Okay, it's still not quite there with... Uh, with Felipe's car, but it's getting closer. We'll uh, make changes after his run. Let's get his track knowledge up first. Once again, we can see, again, very close on pace. Just, what, 41 thousandths of a second for a second there between them. A little bit more now. Six hundredths now. But, yeah, very close between them, which is good. We want two very evenly matched drivers. Because while DRS overtaking is a lot harder, it is still possible. So we can still do a little bit of... Uh, cooperative overtaking with each other. Right, let's take a look at the car. Let's try... doing that. That'll give us minor changes to everything. And we'll run that at the start of the next session. Alright, there we go. That's the end of the session. After a day of free practice yesterday, we wrap up with a third and final session before moving on to qualifying. Drivers will need to perform with remarkable consistency if they're to secure a strong position on tomorrow's grid. 
it's not just about one moment of brilliance. No, they'll need to prove over the course of qualifying that they have what it takes to occupy those coveted places. There's not much left to say, so let's get into it. So we're going to get rain this session or is it going to be waiting for us in qualifying or both? Let's find out. Uh, we've made the changes. We just need to go out and uh, run the car. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, we're going to go 18 laps of fuel for Felipe. He's going to do two runs in this session. Uh, Freddie, we're going to try and run a little bit more. So we're going to go 22 laps of fuel with him. And that should be enough to get him through the first half of the uh, of the session. <clears throat> there we go. Clear my throat. Uh, let's see. Do I need to do anything else? No, nope, that's good. Radio check. Radio check. Should be green now. I uh, do need to swap the position of the drivers here. We have got some rain coming pretty soon. Rain still coming. Okay, and there's the warning. the rain okay so we're going to call our guys in switch on to inters Okay, that's definitely uh, gone the right way for the traction in that change, so that's promising. And that's the only feedback we've got so far. And obviously we know that that setup's perfect, so again, just slap on some inters. send them both straight back out again. Keeping my fingers crossed that uh, this is all we're going to need in terms of changes to Felipe's car. We're about to find out. Track is track is dry, but it's still raining, so it will get wetter again, I think. hasn't actually stopped raining yet. And there we go. It just dips back over again. Power 
How's the balance? Uh, 97, and now it technically has stopped raining, but it's still a bit wet. Uh... Rain all clear. Oh, there we go, yeah. Rain's all clear. I'm going to call Felipe in right now. We'll leave uh, Freddy out there. Okay, so I need to change. these values as much as I can without messing them up for traction because we know that that's fixed now going to be minor minor changes and I think that might be I don't think it's a significant change for the front wing I think what we need to change is braking and cornering without braking traction that one's going to be tricky I'm going to go with just that one change and hope that that doesn't break the traction it's a minor, minor, tiny little change to the oversteer and then little changes to braking. I'm actually going to put the braking just there as well. It still has a slight change on cornering. I'm going to gamble on that. We can always roll back to the 97 if this doesn't work. Still getting water on the track. I'm gonna have to send Felipe out <clears throat> on the inters. So the weather is uh, uh, glitchy at the moment. This is supposed to have been fixed with the patch. They know it's uh, broken and they are investigating. Because um, <laughs> we're getting a lot more rain than we should be getting. Um, this is definitely a, a known bug. But it is going to make predicting what's going to happen with the weather in the race tricky. We might just have to wing it and play it by ear rather than trying to go off uh, the schedule. Uh, did we actually get Freddy up to 100? No, we didn't. Okay, let's, uh, let's send him back out, back, back out again. Oh, wait, no, he's got the full 15 bonus, so we can actually call him straight back in. Uh, Felipe, we're waiting on feedback. If he gets the feedback right, that will give us the full 15 out of 15. Have we got enough time left in the session to get the full feedback? That's the question. We should just about manage it. Track is now drying up. staying out on those tyres we're running at a faster pace because I want to try and get the laps in come on give me that feedback what do you think perfect there we go oh yeah it's, it's, it's still 97 but it's moved to optimal So that does give us the 15 out of 15 bonus. Right, let's have a look. It was the front wing that needed changing, but we're not going to change it. We don't need to change it. We're staying as it is. 
Uh, one flying lap for each driver. Off we go to qualifying. Okay, we have got wet weather coming, as you can see, and we just had the wet weather uh, prediction warning from uh, Felipe's engineer there, from uh, from Ben. Nobody else on track yet. Are we going to be the only ones to set a time in the dry? We might be. got overcast we are now technically supposedly into wet weather but we have got clouds and dry showing in in four minutes time so yeah it could be a while before the rain turns up as long as we if we can get through that would be huge if we can get through this session and the less cars that go out the bigger the chance we have the more cars that go out before the rain uh, hits, the more cars are going to get ahead of us in qualifying here. But we're going to get out of Q1. I feel relatively confident in that. Felipe does get held a little bit. As does Freddy. What's also going to happen is that all these cars that we're overtaking, they are setting their outlaps, so we're going to be in their way when they try and set their hot lap. So that's going to slow them down a bit as well. Whether it will slow them down enough to potentially knock them out is another question. And there we go. We are one and two on the leaderboard right now. <laughs> End the session now, quick. Just dump all the water on the track right now. And we do get in the way of the Red Bull. Very badly as well. <laughs> He still can't get through. There we go. Oh, that's that's really hurt that Red Bull there. Getting past Felipe will be considerably easier for him. There he goes. All right, we've got a uh, Ferrari coming up next. straight past one car but not straight past the other one so the Ferrari gets held as well all through the final sector oh that's brutal Ridley. yeah copy that 
All right, so we did slow down Perez, but not enough <laughs> to to get ahead of him. Oh wow, we are half a second and a second off Latifi. I mean, I knew we got held up on our lap, but I thought we'd be okay. Uh, wet weather is coming. I'm gonna. Do I go back out on the same tyres? Or... No, I'll go back out on fresh tyres. I'm going to go straight back out and try again. We've got apparently now four minutes till the rain's coming. Let's see if we can improve our times. We're going to end up watching most of the running in Q1 because it's probably all the running we're going to get <laughs> in qualifying. Uh, I think I think too many cars are going to set lap times before the rain hits. Yeah, absolutely everybody's going faster than us right now. This is do or die for us here. This is going to determine whether or not we can uh, sneak out of this session. Or whether we're uh, going to get eliminated in Q1. Both drivers improve in the first sector, that's good. Need improvements across the board here. Both improving Q2, sorry, Sector 2. Rain is getting closer and closer. We should just about be able to finish the lap, I think, before it hits. So Vesti actually gets up to 10th. Felipe doesn't improve. He had a really poor final sector there. That is a shock. Okay, well, rain's about to hit. We still have multiple cars yet to set a time. We might actually be able to get Vesti into Q2. And here comes the rain. There is a small sprinkling of rain. Yep, yeah, probably. Okay, uh, Sainz sets the time. Ricardo's just starting his hot lap by the look of it. So I don't think Ricardo, Alonso, Ocon, Sonoda or Joe are going to improve enough here. I think we might have done it with both cars here.
there is Ricardo on soft tyres on a wet track. He's not going to do it. Alonso is only just leaving the garage now. He's on inters, but he's not going to be fast enough. Uh, Ocon on inters on his outlap. Sonoda still hasn't even left the garage yet. And Joe's just coming out now, on probably on inters. He is. We've done it. We've got, we've got both cars through. So it cost us two sets of tyres, but <laughs> we got out of Q1. That's, that's mighty for us. I didn't think we had a hope in hell without uh, taking advantage of the, of the weather there. Yeah, look at the difference there. We are nearly four seconds clear of Alonso. The track will be a little bit quicker on this run here, I think, possibly, but not much. Certainly not four seconds faster. Sonoda can't improve. Alonso only improves his time Good slightly in Nod's position. Ocon 17th. Wow, both Alpines are out in Q1. That's crazy. Joe improves his time by about half a second. Ricardo's going to improve, I think. Yeah, <laughs> significantly. Um, but wow, look at that. Both uh, Astons are through. Both Williams are through. Who thought we'd see that? Okay, we have dry weather again um, for the first session. We'll leave the brand new tyres on and see when the rain's going to hit before we decide where to switch back onto these scrubs here. Looks like this session is going to be light, dry, light. so we'll put on some scrubs for the first run. Save the new tyres for the uh, for the end of the session. It still looks a little overcast. I'm still worried that we may potentially get rain. I mean, there is a, a chance. We're looking at a damp track in 12 minutes. According to this. Yeah, light rain forecast in 12 minutes, which isn't showing on the uh, prediction at the top. So, given that, I think we'll do what we did last time, and as soon as we finish this run, bolt on a new set of tyres and go straight back out again. Just in case it does actually rain towards the end of the session. This way we're not burning up our best tyres when the track's at its uh, greenest in this session. But we're not wasting them by running them on a damp track at the same as well. Trying to find that sweet spot. It's 
So, uh, once again, Felipe looking to struggle in the final sector. Four tenths down on, uh, on Vesti there. And we are still slower than the Williams. Well, slower than Albon. Uh, that figures. Hopefully we'll be faster than Latifi, but something makes me think we won't be. Uh, looks like we're the only team to do a time on old tyres as well. That might be part of the reason. Okay, let's uh, bolt on a new set of softs. Yeah, we're eight minutes away from some rain. So this is it, this is our... Uh, This is our glory run. In fact, actually, uh, because Felipe seems to be struggling in the final sector, let's uh, swap positions here. Let's get Freddy in front. Okay, the last cars yet to set a time are also on track now as well. So hopefully we should get a nice clean run here. This is our last run in qualifying. Don't have any new tyres after this. We're not going to make the top 10. Uh, but we do want to try and get ahead of the Williams if we can. Anything other than 14th and 15th is going to be an absolute bonus here. Improvements from both drivers in sector one. As expected, we are running those new tyres. Okay, what can we do across the line? Okay, improvement for both drivers, but not massive. We do get Vesti ahead of Latifi, but we are still a couple of tenths off Albon. Uh, given the difference in driver ratings there, that's not surprising. And that's it. That's uh, 
that's all we can do. So it looks as though that's where we're going to qualify, 13th and 15th. Really need the rain to hit right now. Which it's not going to do. Is now out. Oh, Latifi can't improve. Good. So, 13th and 15th. Uh, actually, a penalty for Mick Schumacher uh, means that could be 12th and 14th, uh, 12th and 15th here. The time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Race day has arrived. Aston Martin performed well during the qualifying session and they're rewarded with a good grid position for the race. Has proved quite resourceful during qualifying. That puts them in a very good position to make the most of this race start. A sunny day here with only a few clouds in the sky. If things stay this way, the weather shouldn't pose any challenges for the teams. Exciting choices lie ahead then for the teams and their drivers here in Melbourne. So let's see what happens. Right, let's take a look at the weather. It's actually going to start dry for a while. And it's not going to be as wet as we thought. This is supposed to be a heavy rain race. And it's only going to dip briefly into it according to this. Now, we know that this is broken. So, um, we're going to have to wing it, basically. Um... So we're going to select just a set of mediums and start on mediums. That'll get us comfortably to the rain with a little bit of margin. Actually, let's see if I were to change that to softs. Yeah, softs aren't going to make uh, as far as lap 18. Not by a long shot. So... Um, mediums it is and then we'll just have to wing it and and play it by ear because we know that we're supposed to get heavy rain and that doesn't look like heavy rain to me uh, in terms of fuel I'm gonna take two laps of fuel out uh, because we're gonna be slow we're gonna get lapped at least once here maybe even twice uh, unless we get safety cars uh, we can always run at a lower pace if we absolutely have to. Uh, how much fuel are we taking out? It's 1.9 per lap. Okay, it's a lot of fuel to save, but we'll we'll be able to manage that, I think. Um, let's go. Now we should have good weather for the race, and that will be welcome news for the teams. Taking a look at the Aston Martin. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. There's the second Aston Martin. They're starting in the bottom half of the grid today, so there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. And we're just moments away now. Brace yourselves for the Australian Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. All right, here we go. How quickly are we going to fall down the order? We've already dropped, lost a place on both drivers here. Oh, nice recovery from Felipe. Actually moves up to 14th. This is good, come on. Vesti gets 12th back. That's it. Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. And Latifi does sneak alongside us here.
we're going to be in some really tense battles with Williams this season. And we've got plenty of cars behind us that are faster. They're going to try and swarm past us, the Alpines in particular. They're going to be very racy. What's everyone else doing tyres wise? Albon's on hard tyres. That would explain why there's a gap opening up to Norris already. Looks like Aston Martin have just Schumacher on hard tyres as well. That helps us. That will help keep the Alpines at bay a little bit. Try and move uh, Felipe ahead of Latifi here. And I'm also going to try, although it Use might be it. better to wait until DRS Perfect. to try and get uh, Vesti above Albon. But I do need to create a little bit of space for Felipe to, um, to get into. DRS is enabled. Uh, SD is not great on brakes. It's going to be a difficult outbreaking in the album. Time to go though. Push a bit more. I'm gonna go up in. Let's give Felipe some tyres here. There's those Alpines swarming all over the back of uh, Schumacher there. Oh, we've got a lock-up. It's uh, Sonoda. Looks like there's been a lock-up. Let's see what happened there. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. Oh, and he yes, was lucky not to hit the back the of the Aston. Uh, sorry, the Alfa Romeo there. Okay, that's going to drop him out of DRS range. That might help us out quite, quite significantly here. Taking much longer to catch us up now. Okay, we're going to try and make the move on Albon. And also try and make the move on Latifi. We're through up to 11th. Which just sounds crazy to say. <laughs> Considering where our car and drive performance is right now. Uh, let's... Uh, save the DRS of uh, the ERS sorry uh, Felipe manages to squeeze through good lad keep doing what you're doing yeah take it easy Copy. Aston Martin with a great play there Freddie has broken away place. from uh, Albon that's excellent news See if we can do the same. 
for uh, Felipe on this lap. Use energy. Okay. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to go underneath and around the outside of Turn 1. Excellent. It was crucial to get the move done before turn one there, because then we get a full straight of DRS to pull away. So use energy. We just need to charge up. Yeah, it's okay. So close to dropping Albon here. Pick up the pace a bit. Yeah, copy. Can we do it? Uh, not quite. But did we get DRS to Freddy? No, we didn't. Got to get it here, though. That's why Freddy's on charge. And again, we didn't get it. So, uh, Drogovic is going to be vulnerable. As long as we can get him onto the back of uh, Vesti on this lap, we'll be okay. If we can break away from Alex as well, that'll be even better. I think we might just have broken away. close it's so close we just don't quite have enough battery no saving required yeah, he's gonna stay with us another lap again we did not get the DRS how you doing mr. water good to see you tonight all right we should oh, no again Djokovic really struggling in this final sector here. This is it, it's got to be this lap. Let's make it easier for him. Lift and coast will help. Safe fuel, safe fuel. All right, there we go. Got him into DRS range. Oh, Freddy locks up. And that's going to drop him all the way to the back. All that work to get Felipe to catch him up I and then he drops into the back of the grid. Uh, and now Felipe is screwed and we've got a crash. It's a crash and it's more than one car. Let's have a look. Okay, so there we have the LP. Oh, oh 
that's a big crash for the for Schumacher there. And that caused a lot of damage. Okay, Ocon in the pits and with a penalty. All right, now we need Felipe to play spoiler. Save fuel. I am a little worried that we've taken too much fuel out of the car, but given that it is going to rain, our pace isn't great in the, in the wet. Um, or the drive for that matter. <laughs> I think we are going to get laps at least once, maybe twice. Um, we've got a good chance of saving some, uh, some fuel. Technically, we only need to save one lap of fuel in the race because we'll save well, the other lap by getting lapped. This is weird, Drogovic is in clear air now. Maybe, it's, maybe he really was struggling with dirty air, but he's staying ahead of Albon. Even though he's in fuel saving and charging his, his uh, battery here. I was not expecting that. I know a lot of, uh, Albon's on hard tyres, but even so... thought he'd reel us in pretty quickly you can see Alonso moving his way through the field he's definitely going to be on us in fact he's on us right now as he gets past Albon uh, Freddie is three seconds off the back of Sonoda and probably isn't going to catch him Yeah, we're going to take this opportunity just to try and, you know, save a little bit of fuel, uh, get some battery in the car, and when Alonso does get through, which is probably going to happen right now, we will see if we can stay with him. Oh, damn it, we blocked him, which means Alonso is going to get us in the next section, and then we probably aren't going to have the pace to keep with him. So not overtaking here. Another DRS straight to come. And there comes the move. And he sweeps around. So let's uh, go into neutral and see if we can hang on to him. Still a lot to play for. Alpine just advanced. If somehow, some way, we can hang on for a point in this race, that will be like winning the race for us this season. with DRS we just do not have the pace we actually lost ground <laughs> um, the, D, with the the car is definitely not too much drag the DRS definitely needs uh, some work so let's go back into fuel save and charge mode and hope we can stay ahead of Albon. He gets a very good run and of uh, turn two there. We can't find a way through here. It's good. Uh, Freddie is still three and a half seconds off Sonoda, who's caught the back of Ricardo. So now they're going to be lapping at uh, Felipe's pace. Now we should start to close in. 
kill him onto the back of that train again. We're already 40 seconds off the Ferrari of uh, Carlos Sainz. 35 seconds to, uh, for Felipe. So, yeah, we're definitely getting lapped at least once, probably twice in this race. We are expecting rain pretty soon. Ah, okay, yeah, so let's see. It's going to start with Inters. Uh, how long is it going to stay with Inters? That is the question. Long enough to mean that Inters is definitely the way to go at the start. We're supposed to get heavy rain in this race and obviously the prediction isn't showing that so we're winging it in terms of our tyre strategy here There's Vesti, just coming through the corner. He is getting closer. Just got to try and stay ahead of Albon as long as we can here. So we can control the pace of this, uh, this queue. Albon dives up the inside. Okay, uh, now we are going to have to uh, go a little bit more aggressive. Stay cool, man. You're doing a good job. Let's use a little bit of battery on Freddy's car to try and catch up now. See, it's got a little bit overcast now. Clouds are coming out. Rain is a few minutes away. I'm going to use a little bit of tyres as well. So we just need to push now. Yeah, probably. Oh, it's starting to rain already. Okay, uh, we're going to jump Freddy straight into the pits if we can. Might be too late. Yeah, it's too late. We've already hit past the pit entry, look. So, uh, uh, okay, both drivers are going to come in this lap. Box, box. Coffee, box. Do what you can. Yeah, copy. Yeah, leaders are in already.
Yeah, take it easy. Okay, so here comes the pit lane scramble. Uh, so Latifi, Joe, Sonoda, um, everyone else who hasn't pitted is screwed. Oh, we're getting held. Which means Vesti got held trying to get into the box. Oh, that's frustrating. Ocon pits. So everyone behind us, <laughs> i.e. Ocon, is on the right tyres. We've got a yellow flag. Oh, big lockup for someone. Who was that who locked up? Sounds like someone's locked up. Here's the replay. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. Just a bit too heavy on the brakes, and they've locked up. Yeah, those hard tyres do not like wet weather conditions. And Ricardo and uh, Schumacher, I think. Well, I'm not sure about Ricardo, but I know Schumacher's definitely on the wrong tyres. Latifi and Sonoda are on, on the wrong tyres. I'm imagining Alonso is on the wrong tyres as well. We're not okay on fuel. Perfect. Yeah, Ricardo has box for inters. Okay, well, this is bringing Vesti back into play. There goes Schumacher. Sonoda is pitting this lap. So we have lost a couple of positions from where we started or where we were running before the pit stops. But uh, it's not too bad. We're still 14th and 15th. And importantly, we have managed to get a fair bit of battery back in the cars as well and get them back together. So, uh, next question now is, how long is it going to stay like this? Is it going to get to full wets? The track's actually going to dry up briefly in about nine minutes, apparently. I think that might be a fleeting moment. So we're going to try and ignore the uh, predictions as much as we can because we know that they're not working properly since the patch. Well, they weren't working properly before the patch, but especially since the patch, they're still just as screwy as before. And I am convinced we are definitely going to get some very heavy rain at some point. behind the leaders you can see Verstappen's just coming into the final corner now after just 17 laps that's how far behind we are already so yeah that's why I took two laps of fuel out not one just do not have the pace in the car or the drivers to uh, even stay with Ricardo here But this is going to be our best opportunity to see uh, if we are able to unlap ourselves if the right conditions present themselves in terms of tyres or a safety car. I'd love to see a safety car come out when we've been lapped and see us unlap ourselves. I would love to see that. But 
But more importantly, it opens up a whole new range of strategies for us. Um, for example, uh, uh, the next race, Imla, would always have to go, <clears throat> pretty much always as a, as a back team runner, go medium to hard, or even soft to hard, um, but never start on the hards. Because by the time you come in for your better tyres, you just, you can't overtake if you've been lapped, so you would never get the best performance out of those tyres. Now, we'll have that chance. I mean, not maybe not with this particular car, given how, how off the pace we are, but we will have opportunities like that where we can run a hard tyre for a very long time, then switch onto a soft compound tyre towards the end and really sprint and actually be able to use those tyres and at least, you know, try and get fastest laps. rather than being stuck behind a car that's uh, that technically is slower than us, but a lap ahead of us. And races like this, where we have wet weather, it's also going to be mighty huge again. If we are stuck behind a car that's lapped us, and they're on the wrong compound of wet tyre and we're on the right one and we are multiple seconds a lap faster we'll actually be able to overtake them and uh, on lap from that car Right, Joe is uh, sneaking up, well, I'd say sneaking up, he's charging up on the back of Vesti here. Can he hold him off? See Sonoda clawing that gap back as well. Anyone watch the Game Awards last night? I stayed up and watched most of it. Fell asleep for a little bit during part of it, but uh, went back and watched what I missed afterwards. I thought it was a very good show. A lot of great reveals. Some uh, very good looking games coming up. of really big announcements some surprises Al Pacino pretend, uh, presenting the first award that was a bit of a surprise uh, and Christopher Judge's acceptance speech the longest speech acceptance speech in the history of the video game awards much to the frustration of um, I forget his name the guy who was uh, hosting um, the guy who organises it trying to uh, slim down the runtime. Um, and streamline the show a little bit you know <laughs> the very first speech was the longest one in history but it went pretty quick after that and then 
some some weird little kid got up on stage at the final award and just randomly you know manages to get on stage with uh, with the winners of game of the year and then proceeds to uh, grab the microphone at the end and um, dedicates the you know the win the award to his um, his personal saviour Rabbi Bill Clinton which I had no idea what point he was trying to make obviously he wasn't supposed to be there he was arrested after the show but very strange Yeah, I saw uh, I saw that um, about Armored Core. I've not played it in the previous games, but I know that they are incredibly popular, and it got a huge reaction uh, when it was announced. And that was uh, a real shock as well, um, from what I understand. You know, hardly anybody, if anybody, knew Armored Core was was uh, being worked on. I was a little disappointed because, you know, stupidly, I'd seen what I thought was, you know, I'd seen a leak, what was supposedly a leak, it, it turns out it was just bullshit. Uh, and I was taking it with a big pinch of salt anyway, but um, I was uh, hoping to see something that had been suggested that might be there, which was Alien Prometheus. Um, and yeah, that hasn't, that wasn't there. <laughs> it was never going to be there. Uh, so... Um, it turns out that it looks as though it might not yet be the case, but it does look as though that leak was just complete rubbish. Uh, and they did say at the beginning of the uh, show that there were no leaks. Nothing had been leaked, so... Um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed in that respect, but I, I, I didn't expect it to generally be a real thing, but I was kind of hoping... I'm a huge Aliens fan, so any Alien game is something I'm immediately going to be looking at. Uh, yeah, Death Stranding 2 was, uh, was revealed. An interview with Kojima on the stage. Alright. We're 10 minutes away from full wets, but how long is it going to stay for full wets? I think long enough to actually make the switch. Uh, Hades 2 was another big reveal, uh, very popular with the audience. I haven't played the first one, so I don't know how good Hades was, but I know it was a very popular game. Uh, and we are about to get lapped. There is uh, the leader, there is Max Verstappen, just in the background. We'll see him sweep around the final corner there. So we are only a couple of laps away from getting lapped. Vessi's doing a really good job here, though, of uh, holding back Joe. He's held him back for multiple laps now. It's allowing Felipe to uh, pull away a little bit. 
Cyberpunk 27 getting expansions are just for next-gen consoles and PC. Yeah, that does not surprise me that it's not for... Uh, well, they're not next-gen now, they're current-gen. You know, <clears throat> PS4 and Xbox One are old-gen now. It's been two years now for, since the PlayStation came out, PlayStation 5. But, um, yeah, uh, not just that, there's a... Um, a PS5 only uh, expansion for Horizon uh, Forbidden West as well. We are lapped. It took 26 laps, but we've been lapped. Ooh, here we go. The wet weather's coming. I'm going to box this lap. I'm going to gamble with both drivers box, box. boxing onto the full wets here. Box, box. Yeah, copy, box. Right, let's see if any of the leaders pit. Is Max going to pit? Lane. No, he's not. Copy okay. That. Are we making a mistake here? Let's see if anyone else from the AI pits. Schumacher pits, so we're not the only one who's pitting. Hamilton pits, and immediately the track looks like it's going to start drying up again. Oh, God. Of course it is. We just need to charge up. Perfect. But we're not the only ones. Magnuson and Russell also pitting. I still think it's going to get wetter. It's going to go damp and then it's going to get wet again. And then it's going to go damp again. These tyres will hang on. At, you know, at these kind of uh, levels, the tyres will hang on a, you know, for a bit in terms of pace. As long as it doesn't get too, too dry, we'll be relatively competitive. Until that wet weather kicks in again. But once it kicks in and dries up again, we then may well switch back onto inserts when it starts drying up again. have to hope that that uh, extra rain does kick the uh, water level back up or else we've screwed ourselves here Yeah, Last of Us getting a PC release, um, Returnal getting a PC release as well. Yeah. 
I mean, given how how much it will have cost to uh, to remake that game, and the fact that it got a full price release on PS5, it was always going to make its way up to, to PC. You know, that, that was uh, that was pretty much a given right from day one. So I'm not at all surprised by that. I'm surprised Returnal's moving over so quickly though. of water on the track here as uh, these tyres are going to fall away. Hamilton has already given up on his wets and is going back to Inters. I'm hoping it's about to get wetter again. As uh, Ocon finally gets past Felipe. Magnussen's giving up on his wets as well, which means Schumacher's going to be in and Russell are going to be in at the end of this lap. very least we're going to have uh, very very grippy inters for the uh, <laughs> for the drying up phase as we get lapped by Bottas there Schumacher and Russell both in now. It's just not getting wetter. Come on. Please. Nope, it's not going to get worse. Damn it. All right. Fresh set of inters it is. Box, box. Yeah, copy, box, box. Box, box. If it immediately starts getting wetter again now, I'm going to go mad. Ah, what a shame. It was worth a gamble. We just don't have any pace at all in these conditions. You know, our drivers aren't great in wet conditions. Our car isn't great, period. It was worth trying something and hoping, but we were always going backwards in this race. Yeah, we were lucky to get out of Q1 because of the weather. But I had hoped we'd be a little bit faster than we had been. All right, let's uh, push these tires. Happy to Might push. as well.
board are going to be grumpy after this race. We're going to have to make sure we upgrade the boardroom. I don't want to get fired in our first season. There's Alonso and Hamilton. And the snapping is uh, <laughs> maybe 10 laps away from lapping us again. Just coming into the final corner now. Right, what are we doing pace wise? 136, so well, that's the lap we uh, pitted. So this is the actual proper lap. Let's see what pace we do against uh, Latifi. That's our best bet of actually moving up now is to get back, back, back past Nicholas Latifi. I'll settle for that as our race target. Albon's too far ahead, are we sure as, as, sure as shit aren't going to get past uh, Ocon, Sonoda or Joe, probably not even Ricardo either, who is being held up here. We think this rain should ease off. Okay, copy. So, Felipe crossing the line now, does a 130.3, so we're a second a lap faster than uh, Latifi. And we are 15 seconds back. Yeah, we got a release date for Final Fantasy. Uh, obviously, it's not set in stone. It could still get delayed. But uh, provisional release date of next June. Okay, we actually lost time to uh, Latifi there. How did that happen? Yeah, just a poor lap for, for Felipe there. It's the changing conditions as the track's drying up. The adaptability ratings of our drivers aren't great. Vesti, one and a half seconds faster than uh, Felipe on that lap. So, uh, let's have a look. We're only a couple of laps away from switching back onto dries. Can we get away with mediums? Just about. And it will be a couple of seconds quicker, but only literally a couple of seconds quicker than hard tires. Might as well. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Jedi Survivor. 
Uh, I really enjoyed Fallen Order. Again, Vesti is lapping faster than uh, Drogovic. Latifi had a bad lap this time. We gained nearly two seconds on him in that lap. Although Vesti is about to get lapped by Hamilton and then Alonso. There's the end of the rain. So we need to save about uh, half a kilo of fuel with Felipe to make sure that we uh, don't run out of fuel. Uh, we need to save about a kilo for Freddy. Uh, I'm still expecting us to get lapped a second time by Verstappen here, so I'm not overly concerned about that. But we may have to do a little bit of fuel saving. Can Vesti hang on the back of Alonso here? We are a lap and a half, maybe two laps away from dry. I think two laps away from dry. Schumacher has been uh, steadily closing us down as well. That gap was uh, considerably bigger about five, ten laps ago. I just don't want to finish last. two seconds a lap to uh, Max Verstappen almost as he's about to a lap uh, Magnussen who's in the 11th One more lap and then we'll pit. It's just a little too wet right now. It'll take too long for the uh, dry tyres to kick in if we were to pit this lap.
So we think box, 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 box. Copy, box. So we will be boxing this lap. Copy, box. So we cost ourselves quite a lot of time by uh, pitting onto wets and then having to pit back onto inters. That cost us probably about 40 seconds, maybe 50 seconds in total. Okay, so now we get the chance to see ourselves get unlapped. We should have a significant advantage of a snap in here. Although we do immediately get lapped by a Ferrari. Drop back a bit. Okay. the rest of the field starts to box. Well, this is not encouraging. Even on dry tyres, on a drying track, we still do not have enough of a pace advantage to stay with Verstappen and, and we're struggling to stay ahead of uh, Magnussen here. Okay, Latifi's in. Vesti getting lapped in the background there by uh, the second Ferrari of Leclerc. Okay, Ferrari double stacking, thank God. How far behind are we? Uh, Schumacher yet to pit. So we're 13 and a half seconds behind Latifi thanks to the interference of the front runners lapping us there. We actually lost time to Latifi. But we will get both cars ahead of Schumacher now. You can see we're not gaining that much, even though we're on the right tyres. Now we're starting to gain some time. Just Russell and Schumacher, the only ones left the pit. Russell's at the pit lane now, there he goes. And there goes Schumacher. All right, let's try and get Vesti to start pushing. So use energy if you need it. See if we can get him onto the back of uh, okay. Vesti here.
You can stop lift and coast. seconds the gap uh, I'm gonna yeah take it easy actually yep. try and speed this process up a bit the quicker we get them together the quicker I can uh, start getting Vesti recharged stop him burning up his tires okay energy's good up here And then hopefully our drivers can work together to hunt down Nicholas Latifi in the remaining 15 laps. Okay on fuel, so you can do what you want for speed. Yeah, copy. We just need to charge up. Copy. back together. No saving required. Copy. They're about to get split up again as uh, <laughs> we're about to get lapped by uh, uh, Russell and then lapped for the second time by Verstappen. Verstappen's going to get to us first. But that will resolve any fuel issues that we have with Vesti. get the DRS before I have to pull over. That helps. Which means I'll get it here as well. quite close enough. Alright. I'm 
We are lapping faster than Latifi, that's good, but we've got a lot of cars coming up to lap us. So they're constantly going to have to keep lifting like this. See, this is the painful reality that we should have had more of with our Williams playthrough. I mean, I'm not begrudging the fact that we've, we've won both titles with Williams. Um, well, I'm, I'm over the moon about that, but uh, it did get, our car did get too good too quick. And the same with our Haas team. It's, you know, utterly dominating season two right now. This particular playthrough, this is going to be several seasons before we can even think about fighting for wins, I think. And that's partly down to the way that we're going to be building the car, and partly down to the fact that we've got such young, inexperienced drivers as well. So this is definitely a long-term project, this, uh, this series. Okay, All right, let's try and get our drivers back together again. We're only a little bit apart. Not too bad. Energy's good. Yeah. So what do you guys think about maybe us doing, going forward, three episodes of Aston Martin a week, one episode of Haas and one episode of Williams? Turn the two more dominant seasons into, or careers into, uh, once a week. And then, because this is going to be the long-term one where it's going to be a struggle for multiple seasons, uh, make this the one that runs three times a week. Then we have a nice little palate cleanser of uh, competitiveness, sandwiching our, uh, our struggles. there and that's uh, Schumacher getting lapped by energy. Magnussen in the background there. Yeah, he is catching us once again. We are not making any progress on the Latifi because I have to keep lifting for unlapped you know, to get lapped uh, and also slowing down to let Vesti catch back up afterwards but Latifi is about to get hit by Verstappen and then the two Ferraris and Russell. That's going to slow him down. Verstappen's just about on the back of him now.
and now that our drivers are back together we can start to push forward a bit as well so we should see that gap that 15 and a half second gap start to come down i'm hoping we can actually uh, make some progress on latifi and get past him before the race finishes i want to try and stay ahead of schumacher as well I do not want to finish last is out of range again. Put him into charge mode too soon. that we just stayed in this time. No, what the hell? God damn it. Just gonna have to not be able to recharge Vesti. Use energy if you need it, use energy. Perfect. He is struggling in this race. to get lapped by Perez. Let's go drop him even further behind. Just try and break away with uh, Felipe. We'll have to leave Vesky behind. He's uh, he's costing us too much time trying to keep them together. This is what we had to do with uh, Gasly and Teo in our final race at Abu Dhabi. Just sacrifice one of them. Maybe we can hang off the back of Perez. DRS range. There 
Oh, we've already been dropped by Perez. Use energy. Okay. We can push more. Yeah, copy. Disappointing that we don't even have the pace of Latifi here. But uh, Drogovic is the lowest rated driver on the grid, and, and Freddy Vesti is only slightly better on paper. We desperately need more development points. Stop lifting coast. Ooh, Gasly's pitting. Are you going for a quick stint on softs? He's managed to stay ahead of Russell as well. focus on the last six laps all right we don't have six laps we're gonna go four and we're not catching Latifi fast enough uh, disappointing race if we can at least stay ahead of uh, Schumacher that'll be something let's cut back to this fight here Desperately need to work on improving the DRS on the car. We need to reduce the drag on the car. Um, cornering speed would help. We need our drivers to get much better at braking. Because that's their weakest stat right now in their pace stats. Particularly Vesti. Once those, uh, those braking stats get up into the, uh, the 70s and the 80s, then they'll be uh, considerably quicker. left including this one three laps to stay ahead of Mick this first season is going to be so painful and 
don't forget we can't uh, overdo it with car development uh, the new rule which I introduced today which I'm almost immediately regretting <laughs> is we can no longer use intense uh, we can only use uh, normal or rushed for development um, in an effort to slow down how fast the car develops we are just gaining too much expertise too quickly with uh, intense We're not okay on fuel. Sorry. The TV is about to lose a little bit more time. It's about to be lapped by uh, Perez. One more lap to go, and uh, we're not going to close down eight seconds in one lap. But can we hold Schumacher back? Hopefully, Norris coming up behind us here is not going to mess us over. In fact, that might be Ricardo thinking about it. That'd be painful being lapped by a car that we were actually ahead of at one point. Come on, hold him back, hold him back, don't let him die down you the inside. Can use energy, you can use energy. <laughs> over the finish line and today's winner okay not the result we were hoping for but you know rain was always going to mess things up for us a bit and the fact that we got the strategy a bit wrong as well didn't help but we managed to hold off Schumacher I'm quite pleased with that because that car is definitely faster than us. Uh, Magnussen, again, failed to score points, so we are still in the fight for points with Haas. They're still ahead of us in eighth, but they still haven't scored. That's good. So that is checkered flag, but you can keep pushing. Unfortunately, we also lost to both the Williams cars. Albon I expected to lose to, but losing to Latifi, yeah, that's, that's rough. I don't know why they're all happy and cheering <laughs> the terrible race so uh, max wins with the fastest lap as well um there's your top 10 breakdown uh russell dropping into the final points paying position magnuson unfortunately for him but thankfully for us drops down two places from where he started and does not get points that uh, keeps us level on points with zero uh with haas uh, and there's our performance there. Uh, we got uh, a nice little break thanks to qualifying with some, some rain. We managed to get into Q2 with both cars. Uh, Vesti actually managed to start quite high up in 12th. And uh, it started to go a little bit wrong when he locked up and ran wide. And it all went kind of downhill from there. The rain didn't help. We lost a few positions in the rain, then we gambled, went onto wet tyres, which didn't work out, and had to go back onto Inters, and it lost even more time. But in the end, we did manage to keep Schumacher behind us. So, not horrendous, but not great. 
In the driver standings, uh, Carlos Sainz is your current leader with 59 points. That win and fastest lap for Max moves him to within four points as he climbs above his teammate and Charles Leclerc as well. Uh, we've got uh, three drivers just separated by seven points after three races. It's pretty close. Uh, a win apiece for all three of them there. Uh, Perez in fourth, Bottas fifth, another good round of points for him. Hamilton up to sixth with uh, eight points. Russell dropping down to seventh. Uh, Norris getting some points, climbs him up to eighth. Ocon stays ninth. Alonso gets some more points, uh, boots him up to tenth above Gasly. And then there are the rest of the field yet to score. And in the constructors, Ferrari uh, lose a little bit of ground on uh, Red Bull. Uh, 11 points their lead now. Uh, Mercedes uh, only just hanging on to third. Alfa Romeo close behind in fourth. Alpine, good recovery from them. They actually scored some points considering they started in the bottom 15, uh, uh, the bottom 16, you know, 16th and 17th, I think it was, they qualified, getting caught out by the rain in quali. Uh, so they recovered quite well. Uh, McLaren also pick up a few points. Alpha Tauri score a couple more points. We need to finish in eighth to pass our season objective, and Haas not scoring means that is still a potential possibility. Uh, Williams outperforming us in this race, but uh, still below us because we finished higher than them uh, in the previous races. No development points for our drivers. Uh, a good race for Vesti. Uh, an impressive race for Felipe, who arguably was the better of the two. Uh, getting through into Q2 gave us some bonus points there, an extra 35 points for both drivers, uh, which was very useful with their multipliers. And we actually did all right with the sponsors. Um, we didn't get any of the uh, incentives done. We didn't make any guarantees. Um, but we did get a nice base rate payout of 4 mil. So That money will definitely be useful. We have um, a disappointed board, as we were expecting. Uh, we also have low morale with Vesti. Uh, that's not great, but... It only really affects morale for contract signings, and he's locked up for the next five years, so he's going nowhere. Um, regulation votes. Uh, they're looking at minor technical changes uh, across pretty much the entire car uh, at either 5% or 10%. Uh, given how bad our car is compared to the rest of the field, I'm going for moderate regulation changes. That'll have a bigger impact, 10%, on them than it will on us. Right, we have 11 days to go until the next Grand Prix. We have a new suspension again coming in a week. Let's uh, get that on the car. Team Hub improves. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, it's going to cost 2.2 mil to upgrade that again. We've got 8 mil. Let's go for it. Want to get our staff improved as much as we can. Uh, operationally, uh, we're going to improve the helipads. Uh, I am going to improve the tour center. That extra little bit of cash coming in is going to be useful. Uh, not going to bother with the weather center until they fix the weather. Otherwise, we're just paying for something that doesn't work anyway. Uh, car development facilities. I'm trying to decide which facility we're going to upgrade first. Uh, we've only got one upgrade left in this category and it's going to be one of these two it will probably end up being the cfd simulator but yeah we're away off that we still need like 10 11 mil for that so when does our scout department finish 10 days race simulators 21 days away okay Suspension is done. And research is unlocked as we now know the results of the vote. And it is moderate changes. 
so all the teams that you would expect to vote against that voted for it ferrari red bull mercedes they all voted for that change uh, i'm quite pleased with that uh, williams voted against it surprisingly uh, alpine i can understand them not wanting to give up that much uh, haas alpha tauri maybe the lower t those teams that voted against it were worried that they wouldn't be able to recover the, the uh, aero effects as easily with worse facilities who knows but we will have 10 percent changes across the board for next season's car like i said i think that will benefit us more because we've got a huge amount of hours uh to play about with this season and uh you know we're going to stand there 10 percent of what we've got is a lot less than 10 percent of what ferrari and red bull have got so the changes will affect other teams more significantly than they affect us. Let's get that suspension manufactured. Now we can see it will make some nice little improvements across the car. Uh, give us a nice little boost to our cornering. Uh, our speed will improve ever so slightly. And significantly we'll get a nice little braking upgrade as well. Uh, which is definitely going to be uh, important. Uh, we are going to emergency manufacture three of them, I think, actually, if I can rush one. So we'll emergency manufacture two, and as much as I'd like to do another suspension, actually, let me have a look. How long would it take for another suspension if we were to rush one? optimized cooling that would only give us an extra couple of ranks an extra little bit in performance it would take another 17 days which we could get before Miami so that's one possibility we just knock out another suspension for Miami uh, but I am thinking because we need to reduce our drag of either a side pod or a chassis upgrade Let's, uh, let's see, engine cooling I'm not too concerned about at the moment. I want to improve. Speeds. Where I can. I have to do that. That would give me quite a nice little boost to speed. Oh wait. I haven't got the uh, the new suspension on the car yet, so I'm getting different numbers to what I should be getting. Okay, so let's have another look at new project design. Let's start with the chassis. We're still on a spec one chassis. Uh, so, improving drag reduction gives us a nice speed boost. Airflow is going to affect our top speed slightly, but not enough to slow it down. And then if we gave engine cooling a slight little nudge. Hmm, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, how quickly can we get that? 19 days. That's one day too many for Miami. So let's see if we can dip that down to 18. Could do that. And that will get it in time. For Miami. Let's go ahead and uh, rush in a, a chassis for Miami. Uh, so we'll confirm that upgrade. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, rush manufacture uh, an extra suspension as well. Uh, 
Uh, right, have our drivers picked up any experience over the week? Not yet. Next race for, uh, for Freddy, uh, Felipe has. Excellent, let's put that into there. There you can see we were struggling in the wet there. 45 adaptability, that's, yeah, that's low. Uh, Vesti, 59, uh, not great. And his braking is his biggest weakness right now at 58. Um, we need to get that much, much higher. But he's got good cornering, he's got good reactions, he's got good accuracy, good control, great smoothness. Uh, he's good at overtaking defending. It's just his braking that is the worst stat. Adaptability, I'm not too worried about because it doesn't rain that often um, throughout the season, so, or generally, so it's only a few races a year um, that are wet races or have any significant uh, you know, wet conditions that would bring the adaptability into play. So it's purely on braking. For, for Vesti for most of the season I would imagine uh, what about our staff uh, still a while for these guys they did recently get points uh, Chris Cronin long way off uh, Ben even further away from a point uh, our pit crew is up to 67 on tyre changing that's not too bad uh, let's advance to the race weekend there we go, backup suspension is ready and available. Uh, getting a, uh, a hint at uh, Johnny Edgar there. And that is it for tonight. So, not just for tonight, for, for the week as well. Uh, that is the end of what's been a very difficult race for us. Uh, we qualified well all things considered but we struggled in the race uh, we didn't help ourselves with bad strategy either uh, but we are bringing another new suspension to the car for this next race which will be on Tuesday so Monday I'm going to do another race for Haas and then Tuesday Wednesday Thursday next week we're going to do Alpha uh, do Aston Martin and then Friday we're going to bring back Williams and we're going to do season three next Friday uh, so I'll bring it back a little bit quicker than planned, but we're, as I say, we're switching to uh, one race a week for Haas and Williams. So uh, until then, thanks for watching. I am Jimbo, and I will see you all again very soon.